Today we are doing one of the most difficult boss rankings I have ever done, and that is the Cuphead boss rank. Yes, this is all of the bosses from the main game and the DLC, all on the expert game mode, meaning that these were extremely tough. Now just to tell you guys right now, I have completed all of these already, but my recording didn't work, so I had to go through and literally play them all over again. So yes, I was completely drained, but this allowed me to see which bosses were the hardest in this game for sure. And let me tell you, it is a lot different from the regular versions of all these bosses, as that list might be a lot different from this one. And once again, I picked Expert because I truly wanted to see how hard these bosses could get and make a true list from that. Also, I thought I'd mention exactly what I was using for all these bosses. Shot A, I only ever used the P shooter or the chaser in every single battle. For shot B, I only used spread. For my super, I only used the first one, which was the super art one energy beam. For my charm, 90% of this I used the smoke bomb, but for some of the plane levels, I had to use the heart ring just to gain myself an extra heart or two from the parries that I got. These were the main settings that I rolled with. But without further ado, today we have a list of 27 different bosses, so let's get into it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Now let's get into our list of the top 27 most difficult Cuphead boss battles. So the first boss or pack of bosses I have on this list is the Root Pack at number 27. And this is the very first boss of the game and it plays like it. It's incredibly easy and all the attacks are pretty much the same attack repeated over and over again. Expert mode really just makes attacks faster and gives the enemy more health and also allows for more attacks to happen on the screen at the same time. And that's kind of what's going on here. The potato, you're just jumping over some things. The giant onion, you're just kind of moving left and right very slowly watching for the teardrops. And the carrot is a breeze even when it's shooting its mini carrots at you. All you have to do is move back and forth as you're shooting it right above Cuphead and you're good to go. Next up we have the second boss in the game, Goopy Legrande. This one is also very easy and it really just comes down to the positioning of Cuphead. Make sure that you're always center of the stage and you're really never going to get hit. Just moving back and forth and stay center of the stage and let the thing just jump over you every time. The second phase he just gets bigger and then throws out a punch and you can literally just duck underneath it. It doesn't come near you. You're more worried about his big mass and his punch. Final stage is a giant gravestone that tries to slam on you and literally using the dash technique you can just get out of there every time it falls down. Never a problem. Number 25 we have the castle gauntlet from the DLC. Now this one is very weird because they're different bosses that you fight separately but I group them all together and to fight them you don't shoot them at all instead you just parry and they aren't too difficult. Once again, you fight them all separately. You can do the entire gauntlet, but in order to beat them, you just do them separately. But the pawns are extremely easy. You just wait for the ones with the heads to jump down and bounce off of them while jumping over the others. The knight, it's really just patience. You wait for him to swing or charge towards you and start jumping off of his head by parrying. You then have the bishop where you take out some candles and then eventually parry off of his head as it moves around the stage. Now the rook can be one of the most difficult ones because you have to knock back decapitated ghost heads back at him by parrying at the right angle so that way they shoot towards them because if you don't they'll shoot backwards or straight up in the air so this one can be very difficult because you have to pay attention to volleying these heads all the way back to him without getting hit by the sparks flying towards you then you have the queen which is one of the only bosses in the game where you use foreground objects to fight it in the background as she throws all types of like fancied eggs at you and you have to watch out for her giant column of chess pieces that you have to parry off of this can be very difficult but once again it's a very short phase and you only have to hit her like four to five times and you don't have to fight the others in a row in order to beat this game, thankfully. Next up, we have one of the secret bosses within the DLC, the Devil and Angel. This one is really just staying calm under pressure. If you can stay calm and you can focus, you're probably going to be fine. It's not that difficult. It's not that long of a boss fight either. It really is just about looking the right direction at the right time and making sure you're positioned well on the stage. Wherever Cuphead decides to look, Will be where the devil is and wherever he's not looking is where the angel is so you have to you know kind of alternate back and forth to make sure you don't get hit by strong attacks and also the fireballs that are coming at him. Werner Werman has a very cool Tom and Jerry approach to it but the whole Tom part which is the actual cat really isn't the most difficult part. The most difficult part is the earlier versions of the mouse. Yeah, the mouse is kind of controlling this whole boss battle, and the most difficult part for me was definitely the blade saws coming out of the sides, which was the sharp bottle caps. You had to dodge them in the right way by moving up and down on the platforms, and that's why the smoke bomb is so good, so that way I could dash my way past them if I needed to. 
but for the most part, this was a very easy boss, and even when he gets into his giant cat robot, if you have any type of special loaded up, you can hit him with a special and finish him off extremely quick before he can really throw out any attacks at you. Number 22, we have Cagney Carnation, and this is a lot harder than what people think. Trust me, play it on Expert, you'll find out. These little seed things start falling from the sky like every three seconds. These little nipper plants come out and chase you around the entire stage. I promise you, it's a lot more difficult than you think. Try it out on Expert, maybe it's just me, but this boss battle was a lot harder than what I thought so far with the others as already on this list. Now, the other phases aren't too bad, it's really just the first phase for me. Getting away from all those floating plants and stuff was probably my downfall, but without that, everything else was uh, pretty much a breeze. Sally's stage play is one of the last bosses you'll fight in the main game and it's really not that difficult at all especially for a final island boss fight all you got to do is just make sure you're moving left and right at the right times in order to dodge her falling out of the sky it's really nothing else but that the hardest phase for me was definitely the second phase because the babies are throwing bottles at you and she's got like these little robot mice coming out of her umbrella and they move so weird like up the side of the screen and then back down at you. So you got to constantly keep your mind on everything that's happening in the background and the foreground as well. Yeah, it can be kind of tricky, but everything else is very simple. You just have to parry and jump over the giant wave that's coming at you for the third phase. Obviously, Smoke Bomb works very, very good for this. And then the final phase is really just a joke. Jumping back and forth over the umbrella and shooting her out of the air, you'll be done in a breeze. Now, I didn't want to put every single King Dice mini boss on this list, or this list would be close to like 50 different bosses. So I put them and grouped them together based on how overall easy this boss fight can be. For one, hitting the dice, you can really make this an extremely easy boss battle. By just timing your dice presses, you can get through it by only fighting like three bosses and gaining extra health the entire time. By the the end you'll have like seriously six hearts and it's almost impossible to lose the boss battle. Let's just quickly run through the bosses. So the alcoholic drinks are probably one of the worst. I can't stand them. There's too much stuff going on at once and you have to keep track of everything. Once you start eliminating one at a time you'll be good. But that stupid bourbon glass in the front uh, the poker chips just take a very long time to finally defeat. It's incredibly easy. Just watch out for the chips slowly moving towards you from left to right and right to left. Not a big deal. If you have smoke bomb dash enabled, the magic bunny is literally no threat at all. The claw machine monkey was easy, but just took literally 10 years. It should have just been its own boss battle earlier in the game. The cigar is freaking terrible. I hate him. There's too much stuff going on and the cigarettes floating up from the middle and his crazy floating fireballs and waiting for him to come to your side. I don't like him at all. Dominoes can also be hard because an expert, the track that is underneath Cuphead moves a lot faster and there's a lot more things flying at you. And of course, these guys have almost the most ridiculous amount of health I've ever seen. The horse race boss isn't terrible. Just pay attention to what's going on on the ground and make sure you don't get hit by some you know weird thing flying up at you. The roulette table is like literally a joke. You can just parry over top of it. But if you have smoke bomb, literally just dashing back and forth without a single issue, you'll be perfectly fine. And the eight ball was extremely easy for me as well. Just just pay attention to the billiard chalk that bounces back and forth and you're good. And then once you make your way to the end, you have the fight with King Dice himself, which is just pairing off of the pink heart cards, which can still be very difficult if there's a large gap between cards. You'll have to dash to the other one or something. Um, so yeah, that can still be very tricky, but at the end of the day, you'll probably have tons of hearts enough to kind of easily handle this guy. So it, it's not a problem at all. Number 19, we have the devil. Now the devil is the final boss of the main game. And it really isn't that difficult. I know a lot of people have problems with it, but for me, even on the expert game mode, I didn't have to try too many times in order to finally take him down. The first phase is fairly simple. Everything's happening kind of stagnant and away from each other instead of at the same time, which makes Cuphead very hard. And the second and third phases is really just blasting his eyeballs, and his attacks are still very easy to dodge. It only gets kind of difficult is when you have that one platform left, and there's still poker chips and different things flying at Cuphead on that one platform, meaning that you'll probably need the smoke bomb and some other type of dodge in order to dodge out and back in multiple times to make sure you're okay. With that equipped, you really should never have a problem with this boss, and it should only take you a couple tries to beat him at most. Now we're starting to get into the territory of bosses really putting up some serious fights. And for number 18, we have Wally Warbles. For the first phase, you really just have to dodge the eggshells bouncing off the wall. It's not too hard, but then you go through a segment of tons of feathers shooting at Cuphead, and it's really about just keeping your eye on Cuphead, making sure that he's in a good position, moving him up and down real quickly, and it's really not as bad as it actually looks. Looks. 
Then you move on to a third phase where you have to fight his son, which can be hard to make sure that you get yourself within the floating eggs and make yourself out of it back and forth. Then the final phase is hard because you have to hit the dead bird on the stretcher by kind of either dropping bombs or going underneath them and hitting him from there. It can be kind of sketchy because there's lots of stuff flying out of his mouth and flying out of the birds that are carrying him, so it's hard to keep an eye on what's going on and you have to make sure that you're watching everything and multitasking, but it is definitely a difficult boss. Next up we have Beppy the Clown, but it's funny because Beppy himself isn't the main issue, it's everything else that's going on in this stage. First phase he'll try to run you over with his bumper car, but your main issues is watching out for the ducks at the top because you can clash on them when you go to jump over him but it's not that difficult. The second phase, he calls in a train and starts shooting things at you, and this train will be your demise. Beppy, once again, isn't difficult. All you have to do is watch out for his balloon dogs and just continue to blast his head, but it's the train that's the main issue because you can bump into and take damage from the passengers. The third phase isn't too bad, but can be very difficult based on timing. There's one attack where he'll shoot horseshoes out horizontally. You're forced to jump over the passengers in the train car, which kind of puts you in an awkward position to almost have to take a hit if you get in that timing the wrong way. Honestly, with the final phase, he turns into a big top, and he's got all these minions throwing baseballs at you, and if you don't have the smoke bomb, you're really going to probably take some hits here. The smoke bomb is a savior, because it allows you to go through all the baseballs and dodge them in midair, so that way you stay on the platforms and not take damage from the train below. It can be a very difficult boss battle if you don't have the right setup. The Phantom Express is another boss battle about keeping positioning, and if you keep good positioning, you should be fine. The first phase is extremely easy. You can really just, you know, stock up on parries and easily take take out the first boss, and then you move on to the second portion, which once again, huge positioning. You have to watch out for the floating jack-o'-lanterns because they will drop these candies, which will parry off of your cart, pushing it in different directions. This is the probably most difficult part about the entire level, is keeping your eyes on these guys because they will continuously move your cart, and if it's in a wrong spot, you will get destroyed. But just taking out the skeleton's head is really no big deal, and even if you're not near the head, you can stand between the hands and still be fine. Phase three are these things. I still don't know what these are supposed to be, like some evil lollipop or something, I have no clue. But it's once again not that bad at all, especially if you have a super where you can blast them right away, and just make sure you stay out of the way when they go to charge their lightning. Taking out one ahead of time leaves only one left, which makes it extremely easy to dodge. Just pay attention to where these ghosts are coming, because these ghosts do drop parry skulls, which will move your platform that you're on. The chances are you took a couple hits through all of that, and that leaves you with the final portion, which is the runaway train, which you have to parry off of his tail and take out its heart, which is still very difficult because you can't really see anything falling, but there are falling fireballs and even this like bone thing that follows you around the stage and it can be very difficult to keep your eye on everything moving at once so make sure you definitely have a special saved up for this moment number 15 we have jimmy the great now this boss really just depends on how his first couple of phases affect you for instance he has three different types of the phase one the first one are these little cats that open up and send these little bug cats at you this isn't too bad, especially since you can parry most of them, so it's not the worst one. The other one is swords that moves at you one by one, and one of them will be pink, allowing you to parry, but that could be difficult as well. Probably the hardest one to me is the chest of treasure, which will shoot tons of treasure at Cuphead. Now, you could probably just stay up to the top or bottom of the screen and be fine, but a person like me, I just want to make sure I'm dealing damage to him the entire time. Plus, the treasure still follows you, so this one, I don't know, was the hardest phase one for me. Phase two was extremely easy, just busting down different columns, and making your way through the different types of pillars with his face on it, it, it's not that hard. But then it's just the fact that there's still so many more phases left. This next phase, you have to shoot this gooey thing coming out of the coffin, and then eventually moving your way to another phase where you have to fight this Cuphead puppet. Now, the problem here is that the genie's hat is still firing random projectiles at you, so you have to keep your eye on multiple things once again, and you can't approach the puppet or you'll get blasted as well, so you have to keep your distance, which is just very difficult. But you're still not dumb because you have to fight Jimmy himself now as a giant version and these pyramids you have to watch out because they shoot these weird lasers up, down, and left, and right and including the fact that he's still blasting stuff at you through his hat. This is a very difficult boss fight, seriously, and if you find yourself in the wrong position, you can't escape. Now, maybe I'm slightly tripping on this one, but Ribby and Croaks on expert mode is a lot more difficult than what you expect it to be, even for being an early boss. This boss can light you up. So first off, you have different Hadoukens coming out of Ribby's fist, but Croaks is in the back shooting out these fireflies, which can easily distract you, and you have to make sure that you destroy them before you have to duck and dodge from Ribby's attacks. And both of these happening at the same time can just be so frustrating. Phase 2, Ribby is still doing his projectile attacks, but at the same time, Croaks is using 
using a fan to kind of push or pull Cuphead, which kind of messes you up, and the fact that since on expert mode, these attacks are moving faster and there's more of them in this tight little spot that Cuphead is in, so it's easy to get blasted at any point's notice. But it isn't until the final phase where they form into a slot machine. These coins are firing at you at an extremely fast rate here in this expert game mode to slowly make your way to parry his handle. And then, once he suits out these different projectiles, these are extremely difficult to dodge in expert because they are moving at an entirely fast speed. And with them moving so fast, you have literally a split second to decide whether or not if you have to jump or duck, and sometimes it's just too late. And sometimes it's moving so quick, not only do you have to jump, but you have to land on one platform and make your way to the other one without falling. And it's just moving way too quick for the mind to process this, at least mine at least. Next up, we have Captain Briny Beard, and this is another case of just making sure you're paying attention to everything that's going on. Definitely a big multitask boss battle. If you're not good at multitasking, this was probably one of your hardest ones. You have to keep an eye on the barrel at the top of the screen dropping down on Cuphead, the boat eventually shooting cannonballs, Briny Beard himself shooting different things at you and projectiles, and also him calling his friends, either the squid, which you have to make sure you kill or he'll block your screen, the shark, which will come in to the left side of the screen, or his little guppy dogs, which will jump out of the water and try to bite Cuphead. And there's like four or five of them. Not to mention, all of this is happening like literally at the same time, which can be so screen filling and sometimes it's just too much to the eyes. And the final phase is less of a cluster fest and more of a just make sure you know where your positioning is on the stage. Because you have to occasionally dodge this giant laser, but make sure the barrel is not in your way because when you duck, you can no longer move. There's no crawl or anything. So make sure you're not under that barrel or you'll get smashed. You can also parry the laser multiple times, but that's if you're really insane, and I'm not that insane. I tried it a couple times, it just didn't work out that great for me. Baroness Von Bonbon, where do I begin here? So the most difficult part I think about this boss battle is just the random amount of enemies you could get. The enemies aren't too terrible. For the most part, you can get a good set. The candy corn moves very predictable, so you can just dash past it, and its little minions aren't that bad either because they just kind of float up to the sky away from you. The gumball machine just moves back and forth in the middle of the stage, so you just have to move left and right slowly to avoid the gumballs falling out of the sky. It's really not that bad. The Jolly Rancher also comes at you very slow like Pac-Man, and you can just simply just keep going around him, and even his little gumballs in the back aren't too big of a deal either. There's also like a waffle candy bar type of thing that shoots pieces at you that's not not too bad, but the worst one, without a shadow of doubt, is this stupid cupcake. The cupcake shoots these little shock waves of like icing or whatever it is off the top of it, and it's just annoying because it just hits you every single time, and it's just hard to get attacks on him because he's moving in such a deranged pattern. Now, the chaser would probably be a very good weapon for this, especially this next phase I'm about to talk about, but this was just very annoying of a mini boss to get through before you get to the final form against Bonbon. Bon. But Bonbon bon eventually awakens the castle and starts walking with it, and this is seriously one of the most frustrating parts of the entire game. She throws her head at you, and it follows you kind consistently on an expert mode sometimes it's two heads which gives you zero time to start aiming at her and shoot at her plus you got these giant peppermints rolling out of the castle trying to hit you yes you can parry off of those but there's so much stuff going on it's almost impossible to just stop for a second and start shooting at the actual boss once again the chaser ability is probably a really good one here but still without the chaser you're looking at one of the most difficult portions of a boss battle in this game seriously for number 11 we're going to jump back into the DLC for Moonshine Mob. This was one of the very first battles of the DLC and it's annoying. I hate this freaking spider. There's a lot of stuff going on in the stage and you have to continue to go up and down on these different paths to dodge the spider. Also dodging these giant bombs that he's got laying on the stage because as soon as you go by them they'll explode so you have to dash past them very quickly. And also the most difficult part about this battle is the stupid henchman that he calls in from the background. The background is so dark and the henchmen come in also very dark so you can't even see them when they're popping up and sometimes they'll just bump into you and you don't even know what hit you. Now phase two always felt like a break in the action for for me, yes, you can use a smoke bomb to dodge through the different sound waves of the jukebox, which makes it a lot easier. But yeah, you have lots of things running at you too at the same time, so you have to make sure you keep an eye on all of that if you decide to do that. And if you don't have the smoke bomb, well, good luck. You're going to have to make your way all the way to the top of the stage and back down the stage over and over again, and I can see that being just the biggest pain in the butt ever. And the final phase is one of the few bosses I'd say in the game where you absolutely need the chaser ability. 
This kind of homes in on the boss, and you need it to because this anteater creature shoots his mouth out very quickly, and you really have no time to start attacking it. And when its tongue comes out, you can't shoot the tongue for any damage. It has to be the actual snout of the mouth. It's just so annoying. Seriously, it's the most tedious thing ever, and you have to also dodge the giant ball of enemies bouncing up and down the screen. Yeah, I don't like this part. Not to mention there's a trick KO screen where you think the game's over, but there's still a snail boss on the top of his head that you have to fight, and he can also be kind of tricky if you don't pay attention because he shoots these things out of his megaphone very quickly. And starting our final 10, we have Callie and Marie. Oh, wrong footage. Number 10 is Calla Maria. Now, this one is very weird to place because it can be a very decent boss battle to the most incredibly difficult boss battle. And it really just depends on kind of luck. And that's not the greatest thing to have in video games. Great old RNG. And yeah, so phase one, there's a lot of things just being flung at you. There's a lot of things in the water that shoot different obstacles at you. There's even like a sea horse, <laughs> a horse in the sea. I love this game. Yeah, it shoots this spur of water at you, which will continue to bounce you to the top of the screen, which can be very difficult, or you can use it in your own benefit sometimes. But just, yeah, shooting lots of things at you. You have to keep your eyes on everything that's going on on the screen. Not terrible, but definitely difficult. But phase two is when you'll start to see what I'm talking about. She'll get these electric eels to turn her into like this Medusa figure, and she will freeze you from time to time. And these times are random. You will literally have to take out as many eels as you can while also hitting her, because if you don't, these eels will shoot you as you're frozen. And she will also continue to freeze you in phase three, where her head's floating through a cave and she's shooting these skulls at you in bubbles, and you have to dodge these pillars of spike columns. And at the same time, yeah, she's freezing you still. And these freezing scenes are very random. There's no pattern to them at all, and sometimes she'll do multiple different attacks at the same time, which is just not fair. I would say this is one of the hardest boss battles and probably put it lower. Since this is an extremely RNG-based battle, especially for the second half, yeah, you could get a very good setup because there are some times where I finished it with like three hearts and really didn't get frozen in the wrong spots at all. Number nine, we have Rumor Honeybottoms. Now this boss is difficult because of the very beginning and also the very end. Phase one is fighting this Officer B and just dodging these spiked needle bombs that he shoots out, which is very difficult because the entire fight and this entire battle, you have to start climbing your way to the top and making sure that you find platforms. On, on expert difficulty, there's lots of gaps in the platforms and lots of times where you have to make super long jumps in order to stay alive and trying to avoid all these needles and the worker bees at the same time can be very annoying. Phase two, you have the queen bee dropping from the sky and shooting different projectiles at you. One is a triangle shooting little mini triangles, which is very difficult for me to dodge for some reason. I don't know why. And then you also have this one thing that kind of follows you around, this magic orb. And she can also shoot these bullet bees at you, which try to hit you and kind of follow you in this weird zigzag pattern, which at the same time, you still have to try to attack her during all of this which can be very annoying as you're still making your way to the top. And seriously, do not get me started on phase three. For one, she has this chainsaw attack that covers up the entirety of the screen, but one little area on the far side, which you have to make your way to. And if you don't have any type of smoke bomb, you're probably out of luck because you not only have to dodge everything, but also boost your way over there. And you have to try to hit her as she's shooting these flying fists and as she's moving up and as you have to move up. And it's hard to get an attack on her without using the spread. Yes, this is another boss battle that's probably really good to use Chaser on, but you still have to manage your way by making your way to the top, dodging flying fists and also her giant blades. Number eight, we have the Howling Aces. This one is another cluster fest all over the screen. You have to take out this big bulldog as he's shooting his own tattoo bones at you, and also his little pup minions are shooting tennis balls at you as well, which can also put you in bad positioning. There's some times where you have to duck underneath, for instance, a cat attack where he shoots these different types of yarn balls, and you have to dodge these flying fire hydrants while also making sure you're not in a bad spot where the tennis balls are. And this is one of the only stages where you're actually on a plane, which means the left and right sides of the plane that you're standing on will actually move the plane. So you have to position yourself and the plane and make sure that you're able to attack and defend yourself as well which is just chaotic. Phase two is the pup minions coming out and shooting the letters at you. I think they just spell out bow, so they're like barking these letters at you. It's not as bad as it looks. It kind of looks hectic, but honestly, if you just stay calm and jump when you need to and dodge when you need to, you'll be able to take these guys out pretty fast, and using Chaser is very vital here as well, so that way they can follow around them as they're going around your plane. But phase three, help me. 
It's this giant robotic dog, and it's shooting these giant lasers at you. And in expert mode, there's a lot more lasers than in regular and easy. There's also parts of the battle where she will flip the screen upside down and even turn it sideways. This actually keeps the controls the same, but actually messes with your head because you think they're different. You want to actually move up to move right, and that's not really how it works. She also can flip it upside down within the laser portion, which just makes things absolutely berserk. This is one of the only bosses in the game that actually do things to actually manipulate the screen itself and the gameplay, and it definitely is a very difficult one at that. Number seven, you have Esther Winchester, which is this cow that's just blasting everything in its firepower unit at you. Now, the most difficult thing about this one, once again, is just paying attention to everything that's going on on the screen outside of the cow as well. Lots of her attacks, like the ink, can just be dodged by not moving, but there's lots of birds that drop things, like different spike balls, and also different types of dynamite at you, which will explode into many types of dynamite on the ground, which can be very difficult. Phase 2 has her with a vacuum cleaner sucking up tons of money and shooting different safes at you, but once the safes fall and hit the ground, they break open shooting the treasure back at you, so the safe can hit you and the treasure can hit you. We're making this extremely difficult, and when she's sucking up the treasure, it actually brings you in as well, meaning it's still very difficult to dodge everything as it's coming from the left side of the screen. This is a very annoying phase, so definitely make sure that you have a power-up save for this. Phase 3 is when we start losing our minds. Winchester turns into a hot dog bull and starts galloping as she throws steaks at you. And some of the steaks you can parry, some of them you just have to get out of the way. But there's also cans of sausages all over the screen that you also have to dodge. Some of them stretch down, some of them stretch up. So you literally have to keep your eye in front of you the entire time. Not just on Winchester, but also on the different enemies ahead. And I just now noticed they aren't even sausages. They're beans. I'm, I'm sorry. And then the final phase, she turns into a can shooting out strings of hot dogs and you have to go in between the sausages while also dodging the peppers and stuff flying out of the can. This is just chaotic and this is one of the very few bosses, for the planes at least, where I needed the extra heart medal. Number six, we have Glumstone the Giant. This is once again another DLC boss because man, all these bosses in the DLC were ruthless, but this one is once again not as bad for the giant as it is for these stupid, stupid gnomes. If you walk on the ground, the gnomes will poke their heads up, poking Cuphead and his feet, being very annoying, and they'll also come up, shoot fireballs, and also try to hit you with a hammer on the platforms. Your best bet is just staying on the platforms as long as you can until you see the geese crossing sign pop up. And it's just so stupid because the platforms raise and bump you right into the geese. And if you go down to the platform below, you're probably going to get attacked by gnomes. So you really are in a very tight situation there. It also leads you closer to him by bringing in this giant bear, which can be very difficult to dodge and you have to move at the last second. But phase two... Oh my goodness, phase two. In regular mode, this was nothing. So I really wasn't expecting this to be much more difficult. But in expert... This is the most annoying thing ever. There are gnomes coming out of every direction. Everywhere you look, there's a gnome, and they're crawling from underneath you, and you can't even focus on all of them because there's so many. Not to mention, he also has his hand puppets tossing back and forth this squishy ball, which you also have to keep an eye on. It's too much stuff going on here. And believe it or not, phase three is the big break of the entire battle. It's just going back and forth on these kind of like crocodile skull heads, and just parrying when you need to in order to bring them back up, and just shooting the giant uvula, or whatever that is, at the top of its mouth. It's really a relaxed portion of this crazy hectic battle and I'm glad at least it ends a lot easier than the way it started. The very first plain boss of this game, Hildeberg, is one of my most despised bosses. There's like a million phases to this thing and they all are so terrible. The first one you have are these like twin sisters and I don't like them whatsoever. They throw out this beam of light that shoots this laser around, but sometimes a laser just spawns on top of you and there's nothing you can do about it. There's no like kind of signal to where the laser is going to start. You just got to kind of hope and pray that you get in the right position. The tornadoes, they chase you and they chase you well. You have to get very close to her to get out of the way of those and also dodging all these stupid planes and ha-has that she sends your way. I believe the next phase is like an Artemis fight with his arrow, which is also very annoying because after he shoots an arrow, these blue stars follow you around until you're able to shoot them and sometimes it's hard to shoot them because they're so tiny. In the final phase I don't even want to go over it's just annoying. She turns into this giant crescent moon which is fine and the stars are easy to dodge but these stupid UFOs fire these lasers down at such random times it's almost impossible to guess when it's going to happen and you just got to kind of guess when to position yourself and where to position yourself 
it's just annoying. Next up for number four, we have Grim Matchstick. This one is iconic for being known as one of the hardest Cuphead bosses in any difficulty ever. And if you were to go on regular difficulty, this one would probably be one or two. This one is very, very annoying because it's one of those that you also have to keep moving the entire time, finding clouds to jump on and continue to find your footing while also dodging his tail and all of his projectiles that he's shooting out, such as his laser eyes and also his fireballs. Phase two are these stupid little fireballs that jump up at random intervals and they kind of like lead where you're going so they always know which direction you're going to jump into and try to jump into you by moving accordingly. And it's just so difficult. You can even use your special and probably take a hit right afterwards because you don't get any stupid invincibility from it. Phase 3 gives him three heads and shoots out these little fire bubbles. If you pop them, they send out even more fire from around its proximity, which is just annoying, so you have to aim your shots carefully instead of just spraying away like you can with every other balls. He also has this giant flamethrower that you have to make sure you get out of the way of as well. This can be very tricky. Coming down to our final three, we have Dr. Cal's Robot. I despise this robot with so much of my entire being. This was in the main game the only boss that I could not beat on Expert and it literally has taken me all the way to come back today because of the DLC which was like a year and a half, two years later and finally able to beat it and I celebrated like a maniac. Yes, this was one of the also few bosses I had to use the extra parry heart metal to get more hearts because man, this boss is a pain in my rectum. My strategy for the phase one was always to beat out the waist area, then the heart, then the head, which normally worked pretty well. I also had to make sure that I kept shooting the giant missiles that would come out of him because they release a giant shockwave afterwards, and it's not fun to deal with that. But phase one was never too difficult, and neither was phase two. You just had to make sure that your timing was good and just got out of the way at the right time. But phase three is the single-handedly most annoying phase Ever. He sends out these crystals that shoot out these bullet barrage of random attacks that you have to continue to watch, guard yourself, and be ready. The best way is to stand as far back from him as you can and get to the very edge of the left side of the screen, but you also have to make sure that you make the little areas where the electric bars come down or you'll get shocked and get put in a bad position. There's some that you can parry which helps you out, especially with that heart metal, but for the most part, this is annoying and sometimes the duration doesn't even matter. He will continue to shoot these little projectiles out for sometimes, no joke, like 30 seconds straight and your eyes will get so sore. There's times I actually had to pause mid-fight so that way I could regain myself and figure out where I was at and what's going on. This boss battle is annoying, not to mention the foreground actually has objects that can obstruct your view sometimes and get you killed. Ugh. Coming in as our runner-up for the hardest boss in Cuphead, we have Mortimer Freeze at number two. Mortimer Freeze is the most insane thing I've seen in a very long time. So phase one is still tricky, not terrible, but these stupid little icicles that he shoots down, they just kind of fly in any direction that they want with no care or no type of predicted pattern. They just kind of go wherever they want and however they please, which can sometimes just be annoying, but everything else is pretty easy. Phase two is what makes you want to literally pull your hair out. He turns into a giant snowman that has a million attacks. There's one where he'll bang the ground causing swords to pop up. Once again, you'll definitely want smoke bomb for this entire battle. He'll also turn into a fridge shooting out cubes of ice that will break into smaller cubes of ice. He'll also send in popsicle bats to fly down from the sky and still roll into you and over top of you as he's doing all of this. And eventually, as he's shooting out the ice cubes, he'll also try to bum rush you with his roll or send those giant spikes out of the ground at the same exact time which is nearly impossible to focus on one thing and you're almost guaranteed to take a hit. And sometimes when you need to back up in order to jump over those spikes that come out of the ground, you don't have enough time and plus there's bats coming out of the sky trying to interact with you as you're in the middle of dodging one attack. There's sometimes like 50 things going on at once. And if by some miracle you have more than one HP for the final phase, Oh my goodness, it continues to be rough. It sends multiple different following projectiles at you, and also this eye that shoots continuous laser beams vertical all the way across the stage and travels across the stage. And I promise you, if you play this in regular, those laser beams are no issue. They actually move incredibly slow compared to Expert. Now the devil in the main game is the final boss and it never really felt like a final boss to me. I didn't think it was that difficult for a game full of difficult bosses. But Chef Saltbaker on Expert difficulty is the most insane, 
screen field boss battle I have ever played in my entire life. Every second of this boss battle, there's over like 15 things on the screen at once. He has these sugar cubes bouncing around, these limes boomeranging back and forth on the stage, these strawberry spears falling from the sky, not to mention an expert does not one flame, but two flames bouncing from the top of the screen, and also animal crackers that are trying to jump on Cuphead. But then phase two is just even more stressful. You have four pepper shakers, and it's your job to beat them up in order to send them to smack Thought Baker in the background. But the pepper can shoot projectiles at you, the two flames are hopping back and forth, and he's dropping some type of leaves or thyme or whatever type of oregano that is from the sky, and it's dreadfully moving back and forth, which keeping an eye on everything turns to be a real task. Not to mention this phase is an extremely long phase, almost as long as phase one. Phase three then sends you to like a salt realm or like the inside of him, I'm not quite sure. But there's all these salt everywhere, not to mention a salt man and woman dancing together that you have to make sure that you take down by dodging not one buzzsaw, but two buzzsaws on the ground thanks to expert mode. And now for phase four, you have to make your way to the top, jumping on these falling pieces of glass and dodging the heart of Salt Baker as it moves up and down and left and right. And this can be very tricky. Just make sure that you keep your footing and you can tell that this phase was made just because they knew you would probably only have one or two pieces of heart left. And yeah, it's very difficult. You can parry off of him, which is very satisfying, but you can't attack, I don't believe, or he's like invulnerable once you parry. So use your parry only if you must in order to get by him. But man, this was a boss battle. Woo-wee! Okay, we are finished. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was one of the longest videos I think I've made in a very long time. So please, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you really enjoyed this video. And if you want to see even more Cuphead videos, maybe just ranking the best bosses in the game and other things like that, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications so you can stay up to date on whenever I post. Thank you so much for tuning in. And like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.